One came back the next day with an EIN number assigned. The fourth one came back today with a, without the EIN assigned, uh, and they want information in line 7A and B. Now, the, the two others are still out there. So I don't know what they're doing, and, but I'm reading in the application instructions, it doesn't say anything about trusts. It says that if it, for a responsible party uh, means is the person who has a level of control over or entitlement to the funds or assets in the entity that, as a practical matter, enables the individual directly or indirectly to control, manage, or direct the entity and the disposition of its funds and assets. They want yes. grantor, trustor, you know, people like that that created the trust to begin with. Right. So. That's all right. That's fine. Now, a um, couple of things just that I've been able to find out, and this came through literally only today. Um, if you go down to, and this is under trust registration for, for people on the call, um, I've actually updated the EIN SS4 application in line of some, some information that came through. One was actually defining the trust in its correct form. There is a, the form that they, the IRS IMF prefer to define these type of trusts is a non-withholding foreign grantor trust. Yeah? Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, um, we didn't, didn't have this clear before. It's not that we... Um, it's just the volume of information on the IRS IMF. Now, it doesn't mean that the EIN is uh, defective that you've done. It just means that I ask people to go and have a look at the updated application because we now can be clear that by their own definition, this is called a non-withholding foreign grant of trust that is one of the what's called a flow-through entity. Now, the other, other things that come from this research and again, this is literally hot off the press. It's not as if we've been holding this back. Is that you can now um, include under 7A your, uh, the name of the uh, responsible party. And I put in the, in the responsible party, Barry Clample. And then under SSN, put N-A because it's not, it's not uh, applicable in this case. You do not have to put the SSN in 7B when we're naming the uh, grant all that way. Mm. Um, now, the other thing that's uh, important on this is that the reason for applying uh, is better expressed for banking purpose. And so banking purpose is clicked and asset exchange is the correct, um, is the correct uh, title in terms of the... Um, uh, description. So uh, these are some of the changes that have been made and uh, appear to be perfectly in line with the approval process of their uh, EIN numbers. So I, I, I hear what you're saying, but these are changes that have only been made based on some excellent feedback we got on people who have gone down the private trust route before with the uh, IRS, IMF, and this is the way that the IRS IMF identify these types of trusts. Okay? Good. Thank and you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Bye. Yeah. Good on you. Uh, Frank, I don't know if it was my line or your line, but if you could restate what you said for 7A, uh, what goes yes. on that line. Yeah, 7A is listing uh, you as the uh, grantor. Uh, now, if you want to, if you want to make a distinction uh, between the um, the grant or the beneficiary, uh, we may come back on that and refine it as the um, uh, trustee number, and then the the number will be different to the trust that you see because the granting of the true trust is the divine trust, so it's the divine spirit that is ultimately granting the flesh, creating the flesh. So, in in this case, we would say that the uh, um, responsible party uh, will be uh, uh, trust number or 
at this point we've put the name, um, in this case, Barry Plan Example. So um, that may be a minor refinement that we need to do, but I hope everyone's patient that we're just getting an understanding of how to engage with an agency that doesn't make clear the instructions on their forms in how to properly register. But at this point, the form that's there, uh, the update version that's there, is our best knowledge to date in the correct uh, registration format for EINs. Alrighty? Okay, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, and thank you, Ron. All right, well, we've got B Free 1958. Do you have a question? Hello? 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 Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, Frank. Thank you for um, the information that you're providing on this call. That's right. I have a, a critical legal situation that I'm facing. I'm due to, I'm in the state of Arizona, by the way, and I'm due to go into court uh, based on a plea bargain that I had to, to give because they, they did not allow me to put on a defense. I was doing my own case. And I'm supposed to go in for sentencing for non-violent. It was a uh, sort of like a uh, a payment, a bounce check kind of a payment. It really wasn't a bounce check, but that was a financial thing. Okay. So I had to um, do a plea bargain, and I, I got your information. I just heard about your your talk show, and I. I've been listening to all of your shows and trying to get as much information about the EDP and everything, um, but I'm, I'm wondering, since I have to be there for this sentencing on Tuesday of next week, you know, is there something that you can do, that I can do to uh, go back and get out of this plea bargain thing? Because sure. It, sure. And, uh, then, and then at the sentencing? Absolutely. Where can I find the information to, to yep. just get out of this? Because there was no damage, there was no injury to anybody. No, no, that's right. No, let me let me answer. Let me answer for you. Okay, you ready? Yeah. The first, the first thing to understand is all paper is in memoriam. All paper is merely a reference. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The most powerful thing that you have is your voice, your oath. You understand that? I do. Okay. Uh, the first thing that I would do when I enter the court is that the court will ask, um, well, two things will happen, um, the, potentially. Firstly, you must be respectful to the court. Yeah? Okay. Let me start with the, with the plea bargain first. Uh, at the appropriate time, without interrupting and being rude, I would state for the record that the plea bargain was uh, made under duress and necessity and does not represent your consent. Now, if they've asked you to sign it, and the judge would then say, but you signed this, Mr. Whatever, yeah? You signed this. I'd say, uh, I, I did sign that, Your Honour. I signed it under duress, and I'm stating for the record here and now that everything associated with the plea bargain was as a necessity uh, for the fear of my personal safety that your system placed me under, and it was under duress and has no bearing on my uh, oath or vow. Now, they will get really, really annoyed, okay? Okay. Because you have now just stated that everything that is happening, uh, that has happened, is under duress, yeah? And if you want to add, you can say in the whole court matter was under duress. Everything that I stated was under duress and admit it was under duress, Your Honour. Okay. So that means that the, the bond that they created on the plea bargain, which was how they made their money, is now utterly worthless. It means that there is nothing on the case that they can use. It is utterly worthless. So now he'll attempt to go for sentencing uh, to cr potentially create a new bond, yeah? Are you clear on what we've just said first? Are you absolutely clear? 
I am clear. And at the time that I was there, I actually was in shackles. I was in custody, handcuffs and shackles. So even when I had to sign it, I was in handcuffs and shackles. I was in their custody. Okay. So it was definitely well, under arrest. Okay, not good, but but you're clear now. Okay, so there's no mistake now that that you signed whatever you signed under duress, and you make that clear. Do you understand that absolutely clear? Yeah. Yeah. Now let's talk about the sentence. The sentence is an offer. Doesn't matter how it sounds. It is an offer. Yes. The yeah. sentence is an offer. Now when they sentence you, you must immediately when he's completed, say, Your Honour, I decline that offer. All right? I decline that offer. Okay. The judge will say, I'm not making an offer. I'm telling you. You say, well, uh, I decline that offer as well, Your Honour. He will hate that. And then he'll say, well, what, what can you do? I mean, if he's frustrated, he'll actually ask you what the sentence should be. Now, have you thought about what the sentence should be? Yes. What should it be? No sentence at all. No, that's not a sentence. Give me a sentence. You want to you want to get you want to get through this. Tell me what the sentence should be. The sentence should be that I should go home and be free to live my life. Well, I, I'd simply say I, I I would um I'm I I I made a mistake, Your Honour. And I respect that because I made a mistake, everyone sh everyone should should be recognised. And I I feel that 20 days community work without having a record is uh, is a fair is a fair sentence. And okay. if you don't accept his offer, he'll close he'll close on that. All right. Okay. Or time in custody, no record, and 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 the bill cleared is another one that guest 78 just put on. Thank you, guest 78. So there's there's uh, another example, yeah. Okay. Do you understand you understand those two parts now? Yes, I do understand those two parts. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. I'll let you know All what right. happens. Okay. Thank you, there. Be free. Okay. Next caller, we have a question from Francesco. Uh, Francesco. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you, Frank, very much for taking the call. I'm going to build on that last question. I have a friend that um, was forced into a plea bargain because he was trying to save his home that the IRS was stealing. And yep. he's just been introduced to the EDP, and he wrote me an email. He is reading it as we're speaking. He said, on page 11 of 12 of the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, Doc seems to indicate that one charged with a serious offense cannot use this process. Is that the way you understand the answer? Uh, and, uh, okay. A, a serious offense in terms of an ecclesiastical... Okay. E every person, whether they have committed or allegedly committed a murder or some sexual abuse or anything, every man and woman under the coming of one heaven is given the opportunity of redemption, everyone. So no one is prevented in seeking redemption. The, the point I was making about the ecclesiastical deed poll uh, it, it is simply that when, when one is facing uh, those kinds of things, and maybe it's got to be cleared, that as a member of society, you may still have to face uh, a court within the society if you're facing some serious matter, such as allegedly murder or some alleged sexual abuse. But in the case of your friend, absolutely they have the right. Now, if that's not clear, send me an email, show me the okay. section, and we'll make sure that that's clear. Okay? Okay, then I can use what he, he can use, what you just spoke about then, correct? Yes, but, but okay. please send me an email if, if that section he raised because I don't want anything to be unclear, okay? Thank you very much. Good on you. All right, thank you for your question. All right, next, uh, who knows truth? Are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm 
getting back to the deep hole and the and the trust, I had to put that down for a while and take care of some business. But I was wondering, is there any special order that you should do the uh, these steps to 